Part 1. White Clouds. Harpstring Moon. Familiar Scenery. In honor of the saints whose births or deaths took place under this moon, the people perform music once beloved by those divine beings. Whether by harp, by flute, or voice alone, joyous melodies are shared between farmers as they sow their seeds across the vast plains of Teltin and Grander. As you have already been notified, your mission is to subdue some bandits. Our students have been learning about combat through study, but this is a precious opportunity to provide them with practical experience. The Knights will support your mission and are prepared to offer their assistance if necessary. In short, this is no mock battle. You must be prepared for anything. You will receive a message from the Knights when it is time to depart. Until then, use your time wisely. The last time we fought bandits, you saved me. Maybe I can return the favor this time. The Knights are well aware of our enemy's strength. We can count on them to keep the battlefield under control for us. It seems unlikely that we would lose. Still, let's do all we can to prepare. You seem well. Are you adjusting to life at the monastery? Well, I didn't expect it would be easy on you. When we were mercenaries, I handled everything. Outside of battle, you didn't have much contact with people, did you? I thought being thrown into a swarm of noble brats to teach would be a bit much for you. It seems I was right to worry. By the way, I heard about those bandits. Your first assignment is to take them out, right? That's fairly routine for you by now, but don't forget it's the first real taste of battle for those brats. It'll be tougher to sleep at night if you let one of your little pupils die. So stay vigilant and lead them well. I wish I could offer you my support, but Lady Rhea won't allow it. For now, I'll try to figure out what she wants from you. I don't mind you settling into your life here, but don't let your guard down, ever. Perfect timing, Professor. I've just received word from the Knights. They've located the bandits. It seems they have them cornered. They are in Xanadu, the Red Canyon. I can't wait to get started. I'll strike down those heinous thieves before they know what hit them. Charge ahead if you must, Caspar. Just do not put the rest of us in danger. I'm going back. I won't be of any help anyway, and I don't want to get hurt. Don't worry, Burn. It's just some bandits. We'll have no trouble at all. Eh, don't get ahead of yourselves. Unfounded optimism isn't a great strategy. Let's just get this over with. There is nothing to... get over. We will work with each other to achieve our mission. It's time, Professor. Give us our orders and let's move out. Taking children into battle, are we? I am not certain I will be able to sleep soundly after beholding something like that. I shall allow you to turn back the hands of time. But no, this power is not infinite. So this is the Red Canyon, a ruin of sorts by the look of it. Let's end this quickly. The thieves must have been driven back. Be careful or the cornered mice might bite us. The knights chased us all the way here? Chief, let's get out of here. There's no way we can win against them. Shut your dumb mouth! Where would we go at this point? You can't be a thief if you fear death! 
Professor, I hear there's a back road to the west. Why don't we split up and attack from both the west and the front? If we advance tactfully, we can attack our enemy from both sides. I leave the rest to you. Regardless, we must cross the bridge first. Anywhere I can hide. What did I expect? I don't care if they're stealing. Can I go home? to the next one. And I didn't even enjoy it. I could have been sweeping this whole time. I... I killed them. What have I done? The blood... Regrettable, but there was no other way. You could have at least tried. Any experience is worth having. Allow me to clean this up for you, Lady Edelgard. Be stopping. Hard work created this. One step before the next step. You're in good form. People and beasts are as one. Calm your heart and do not be worried about this killing. Winning's always nice. So, is making us experience a real battle part of the church's teachings? I am Ferdinand von Eyre. <laughs> Only a fool challenges me. These ruffians are no match for a noble like me. Spoiled little noble! Just die like a good little rich kid! Do you really think being born a commoner gives you the right to kill? Despicable. You're... Can't be. A mercenary from before? So what, now you're pals with the knights? Uh, I'll kill you and your pesky brats! The glory of progress. Sending these brats instead of the knights means they've underestimated me! Big mistake. I should have never listened to that idiot. What a mistake. Ugh. I think I'm improving. 
Thank you for leading us, Professor. Though I suppose there was no way we could lose to a familiar foe. In any case, something about this canyon feels inexplicably strange. that you recall this place. You must be weak of heart. Each time I speak, it scares you so. Although the battle's at an end, do not feel too at ease. Well, anyhow, I am quite fascinated by this place. As far as I can tell, this is your first time here. Here? I dare say it would be impossible to have forgotten such a place as this. I must admit I am unsure. Beyond the name and this strange feeling of familiarity, I can't seem to remember anything about this place. And yet, a great depth of emotions tied to that sense of familiarity. Like joy and sorrow, pain and love and all things in between. If I was somehow here before, I wonder what took place. Professor, I was wondering where you are. It's about time we headed back to the monastery. It is time to depart. But know that time reveals all things. One day I will remember that which I have lost. Oh, by the way, it seems you've earned my gratitude. The thieves who came here are no more. I am not sure myself, yet I am grateful all the same. In any case... You must become accustomed to my voice. If you fall down with shock each time I speak, that just won't do. You think you're standing strong? <laughs> of course you are. It was a jest. On our way out, I had the chance to observe the Red Canyon. Did you notice anything, Professor? Of course. I expected as much. The area was covered in ruins, each more curious than the last. They did not match the architectural style of any era or culture within the Empire, or across all of Fodlan for that matter. That can only mean one thing. The Valley Civilization must have flourished and fallen in the distant past, long before the Empire was established. Who do you think lived there? <laughs> it's possible they weren't even human. Hmm, perhaps their remnants still influence this world. So you have safely disposed of those bandits. I pray that their souls find salvation. But why did they target the students to begin with? We must further investigate the true cause of all that took place. Until we know more. I ask that you support the students and relieve them of any unnecessary worry. Good. I have high expectations for you. By the way, how was your time in Xanado? Legend has it in ancient times, a goddess alighted upon this world in that very canyon. For a goddess from the heavens, Xanado could only have been a temporary haven. Long ago, the divine Seros received a revelation from the goddess. A gift 
to help guide the lost. The goddess is always watching over Fodlin from her kingdom above. However, in ancient times, the goddess graced this world with her presence and offered salvation to the people here. She is the mother of all life, the arbiter of every soul. I see. During your time here, I pray that you come to devote yourself to the teachings of Seros. Uh, Lady Rhea, I am sorry to interrupt. There is something I must ask about in regard to those bandits. As you wish. We shall continue our discussion when next we meet. A goddess? I have no memory of her. But then, I have no memory at all. Oh, how bothersome. It is as though I know, and yet I don't. Perhaps Xanado was my home back when the goddess walked the land. If so, what does that make me now? A ghost? Hmm. No, that cannot be. I am most certainly alive. Of course, we also have the mystery of why I'm here with you. Is it somehow connected? Perhaps some past regret is stopping me from moving on, and now I'm forced to stay with you instead. No, that's not it. I can't believe in such a meaningless existence. I... Uh... <sighs> 